Hi, and welcome to this overview on Informant 5. We've got Informant 5 loaded on our device. We're going to go ahead and open it up. The first thing you'll notice when you open up Informant is some request to make certain data on your phone available to the app. So you're most likely going to want to go ahead and enable those by clicking on each one. Click Continue. The first thing you'll see is some screens that tell you a little bit about the new informant. Templates are now known as triggers. You now have email integration so you can convert emails to tasks. Purchase information. If you have an informant sync account, the first thing you should probably do is go and set up your informant sync account. You'll notice with the new informant 5 the menu structure is different. The nice thing about this is there's one main button. In my case it's in the bottom right corner. That takes you to a navigation that is a two-dimensional navigation. This is a very innovative new menu. Across the bottom, you've got your calendar notes, tasks or projects, and your focus view. And the views across the vertical axis are a bunch of calendar views. And you've got a sync option to force your sync up at the top. So you can explore through those calendar views if you like. My personal favorite is the month view. To get to the settings area, the settings area is now in my opinion easier to find. You click on the the smart bar button there in the right and then the settings will be in the top left corner. So this will take you into the settings and for the sake of this video I'm going to run through a few of the settings and just quickly describe them. You can see that Informant is very configurable and very customizable so if you go ahead and just browse through these settings you'll see a lot of options but um, a lot of them are very self-explanatory. Uh, you'll notice that Informant is in dark mode when you first opened up. You can go into color and appearance and you can switch it to light theme if you like the light theme. And then to get back into settings, I would just hit the, the smart bar button, home button, and then settings. And I'm back into settings. If I go back into color and appearance, you notice that I have got uh, options to turn on and off the display when I see a task. These, this, this right here will show me different options that I can enable or I can turn on or turn off if I want the project to show up. So anything that I tap turns it on, and if anything that I turn off turns it off. You can see with color coding options. Themes are gone in Informant 5, but you have so many options to configure your colors that you can, uh, for the most part, you can get back to the same color coding that you may have liked with one of the previous themes. You can see here all of the different color coding options. You can change font sizes. You can see here all the different options to change your font sizes. You can change the, the number of lines that display. And if you go in and you create some, uh, you know, kind of crazy color combinations that you don't like, you can reset the color appearance there as well. Okay, view settings. Let's take a look at those. So the view settings here are basically on-off options that let you configure different features of each of the views. So on your weather view, on your focus view, which activities, events, and attributes do you want to show up on that view. You can configure all of that in your view settings. Uh, calendars, triggers, and more. Travel Assist. This is one of my favorite features. If you do any traveling at all, you can go ahead and configure the trips that you may be taking and then any appointments that you create that are scheduled during that time will be scheduled in the appropriate time zone. This fixes the problem of traveling and having your appointments all get shifted when you when you change time zones. In Manage Calendar you can configure any of the calendars that you have set up in your phone. Filters are basically ways of filtering the data that shows up in the different views. Okay, let's go into Accounts. This is where you're, if you've configured an Informant Sync account, this is probably one of the first things that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to go ahead and set up your Informant Sync service. So you click Add Sync Service I've got an informant sync that I'm going to load up. Okay, once you get your sync credentials put in, and of course you're going to need to have an account, you can get your account set up at pocketinformant.com if you don't already have one. Uh, so you'll enter your account name, password, and then you will click the sync button and it will sync your data. So if you've already had an existing account, you can plug it in and it will sync all your data over. All right, you'll see a few options here, whether you want to access events from your calendar or from your Reminders app. Those are from the native app. Logging sync activity. If you're having any trouble with your sync, it's probably a good idea to log that so you can share that with our support team. 
And while we're here in settings, if you have a question for the support team, you can click on the support icon and you can look through the help tips that might be available or you can start a new support conversation by clicking that button and you can start having a dialogue with our support team right there. Uh, if you want to share settings between your iPhone and your iPad, you can email your settings to yourself and open them up on your new device and that will take all of your settings and save those from device to device. All right, let's go back to the smart bar button. So we click on the button and let's take a look inside the task area. Okay, inside tasks, the first screen I'm going to see is a summary screen. If you've got projects, you can drill down onto your projects. If you just want to see a list of all your open tasks, you'd click All Active. And then once you're inside this screen here, if you navigate to a different view, let's say your calendar view, and then you go back to the task view, you'll notice that you're back uh, to the same place where you last were inside the task view. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple of shortcuts for entering new events. Uh, here I am on the 30-day calendar. I'm going to go ahead and click on a date. I'll say the 10th. Notice that it uh, drills into the 10th. It shows one of my events. I can click the plus button here, add an event, and in the title screen I've got an option here to swipe left. So if I swipe left you'll see the field goes a little bit blue. It changes from title to title or event description. Let's say I've got a flight that leaves at 723. I type in 723 as the first characters on, on my appointment and I say uh, flight to Dallas and you'll notice as I'm typing that it picks up the time and puts that right in so I don't even have to worry about the time. There's, that makes it really easy to enter uh, appointments faster with fewer clicks. Now one other thing that I'm going to show you is back on the home screen. So from the home screen I can actually click in the search quick entry box so I just type right in there and I can also I can just start typing in in this case I'll type in 445 fly to Denver and as I'm typing that in it gives me an option for quick entry so I type I just tap that and it pulls up my appointment creation screen with fly to Denver as my appointment name and you'll notice that it picked up my time as 445 a.m. so then I can finish adding in my appointment and that, that's another little trick that will save you some time on creating an appointment as well okay let's take a look at triggers to locate triggers go to the home screen and then go to settings in the top left corner there and you look for calendar triggers and more and you'll see manage event and task triggers so triggers are uh, pretty cool so I'll just show you a couple of triggers this will give you a couple of ideas there's probably um, a thousand uses for this particular triggers feature and I'd love to hear some more feedback so let's say I have a trigger called grocery shopping so the trigger called grocery shopping has a couple of keywords so the keywords could be grocery let's say my local market is called Smith's so anytime I have grocery or Smith's in the title of an appointment it's going to suggest this trigger for me uh, I can choose to have this trigger show up in my new menu we'll sh show that in the new menu and then down here you can choose whether these attributes are applied for events or tasks or both so in my case I want to have a specific icon that gets uh, associated so I've selected the grapes icon and then down here I've created some child tasks that are going to get applied so I created one called milk bread eggs and let's say I want jelly so each child task I put in I type in and then I click the enter key and that will put those in as separate subtasks. Any of the attributes can be set and triggers will only override the, t the, the fields that you didn't already set. So I save that. So um, I'll show you another example here. I've got one for soccer games. So under soccer games I've got the keywords for soccer or game. Uh, on this one I have loaded in the address. So anytime I put soccer game in it's going to put the address in the location field. So that's going to be handy because I can click right on that and get a map set up for me.
Okay, so I'm going to save those. Let's go back and let's look at how these might be used. Okay, so I'm on, I'm on my event screen. I'm going to click New Event, and you'll notice that those two triggers that I've created are now showing up as optional on my Create screen. So if I was going to do Create Grocery Shopping, I click that. It gives me a new task with the child tasks for milk, bread, eggs, and jelly already loaded up with my icon already loaded up. So that's a quick overview of how you can use triggers.